Hi, this is Anne with an anagram in which I'm going to demonstrate how I take some inline code that uses a function to draw a circle to create some code that generates a circle object, which then you can ask to draw itself. Um, this is in a sequence of exercises where we are getting more and more sophisticated in our use of objects. I think if you remember where our drawing code left off um, in your previous exercises, we had um, a function that could draw a circle. And one of the things that you passed to it was a point, okay, that had an X and Y. So the, what gets passed to draw a circle, one of the parameters for that is a point object that has an X and a Y. And that allowed us to do things like draw snowmen and, and other more sophisticated things. So um, in this case, when we were calling this function to draw a circle, we passed it a center point and a separate value for radius and a separate value for fill color. Where our code is gonna start this week, um, where my demo code starts this week, you'll actually have the end result of this exercise to start with. But where our, our demo code starts this week is if I run this, I now can not only draw circles, but I can draw rectangles. And what you'll notice about these two functions is that they take a canvas context, um, and we're treating that pretty much as a black box. So just hand it in and, and um, you're giving it down here and you're gonna pass it into each of these functions. And then each of them uses an object, in this case, a circle object where, let's take a look here. The circle has a center point, a size and a color. So rather than passing in context and three additional values used to describe the attributes of the circle, we're passing in a context object and a circle object. And then you use the dot notation, okay, which can get little deep. So here we have an X property of a center property of a circle object. And here we have the size property of a circle object. Okay, so that's where this demo code is starting. You're going to have, you're going to work with the draw rectangle in your own exercise. But what I'm going to go through is one way to convert um, this inline function and this simple data only object to some code that can give you what I'm calling a dependable object. Um, one of the problems with um, adding methods to our objects is you have to be really careful that every time you create a, set, a, a center property, a size property and a color property, you spell them right. And so what we want to do is create some code that will generate us an object that we know always has the correct attributes. So um, this is draw zero. That's what I was given. Um, currently, index is using the point file and draw zero. I've already made a copy of draw zero. So the code I'm going to work in is one. So I'm going to go ahead and change this file name. Um, I'm going to verify that the code still runs. And then we're going to we're going to take a quick look at point. Okay, and this creates a dependable point object. Uh, I've done a couple demos of working up to this. Um, so we have a point to string function, which always generates a specific format of point output. And it is using the this notation because, because the function will only run inside the context of an object. And then down here, we have a, a function which will make a point, taking a location x and y, creates the point object with object literal, and always gives the function that can do the labeled output assigns that to a property to string. When you return point and you use it inside this code, one of the things that happens is point gives you a nice labeled output. 
And as of the starting code of, of this exercise, when you log circle one, you get the default object object output, okay, that's concatenated to the label. So as a destination check, uh, where we want to get to is I want to have a new file. I'm going to call it circle.js. It's important as you get more and more code that you get comfortable having code in multiple files. And um, I'm going to go ahead just so I um, don't forget it later. I'm going to go ahead and add a line for circle.js here. When circle.js is empty, um, let me think about that. No, I'm not going to add that till later. Okay, so what circle.js is going to have in it is much like point. So we're going to, let me bring point up here and we can have both of these sort of open. I can't pull them up side by side, but we have a function here that turns the point object into a string and we have another one that makes a point. Okay, so what we're, our destination check here is, um, to have a function takes no argument, takes no parameters, and it will return a string. Okay. We're going to have a function to make a circle, which will return. And the other thing that um, circle is going to have in it that point does not is circle is going to have a function in it that draws. So point can't do much. It can just be. It can only exist. But once you have your circle object, you can ask the circle to draw yourself. And the whole point of having objects is to have, to create uh, bundles that include both data and code so that you can essentially ask an object to do something. Um, you can think of it a little bit like having a dog and the dog has many attributes, but you can also ask the dog to sit. And if it's a well-trained dog, um, not belonging to me anyway, it, it will sit. Um, and, and basically you can send it messages and ask it to do things. And in general, if your dog is well-trained, it will do those things. So um, if you feel really in command of your coding, you can take these stumps and simply start sticking code in there. But unfortunately, what happens if you work that way is you, it's sort of high stakes. Until you get almost all of this code written, it's very hard to test it. And you know that I like the approach of code a little, test a little. So what I'm going to do is essentially morph this code slowly to what we need and then, and then move that code into the circle file. Um, JavaScript is a little different, um, a lot different when it comes to objects than other languages. Um, in general, there's some language lawyer differences. Um, JavaScript objects are prototype based and virtually all other classes, objects are class based. Um, there currently exists a class notation for JavaScript objects. And, um, and that's great. Um, it certainly looks like more languages, but it's based on the kind of um, notation we're going to use. And so we're going to do the older, but also simpler, I think, um, to understand what's going on, uh, prototype based constructors and things like that. Uh, but the cool thing about JavaScript is in other languages, something either is or is not an object. And JavaScript is so versatile that you can essentially sort of take something and make it more and more object-like all the time and, and kind of 
get a better sense of exactly what's happening when code functions run inside a um, inside a object instead of as as standalone functions. So um, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, we want to create a two string method. So um, to do that, I need to have a function and I'm going to pass it the circle object, okay, because we're going to call it from down here and we're going to ask it to log that, okay. So um, we're going to pass it a circle object and we're going to ask it to do something. Now, so you don't have to watch me type. I'm going to stop the recording and go ahead and get this typed in so it works right and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've, I've typed in this function which essentially creates labeled output that we can then use to log the attributes of a circle. So let me just add a line of code that calls that um, here. Okay, so you can do this. Console log is going to print out the result that is returned from this call to circle to string. So if I hit run now, what we're gonna see is after this output, we're gonna see some labeled output. Okay, so this is our new output from circle to string. Okay, and that's kind of nice because we see it's, it's point attribute, it's size and it's color, and that's much more useful than just seeing this. So that's good, but in fact, what we want to do is we want that to be automatically invoked whenever we need a string out of the circle object. And the cool, it's, it's hard to convey how cool this really is, but the cool thing about JavaScript is that we can simply add that on the fly, okay? The conventional name, the name this needs to have inside the object is a two string method. And we can simply take that function that's declared above and say, okay, circle, little circle guy, your two string method is a function you're going to find in your environment someplace called circle to string. Now, the thing we need to do in order to make this code run well inside the context of the object is we no longer need to pass an argument because this code is inside circle, it belongs to circle. So instead of passing a circle parameter, and using it here, we use the this notation so that when this code runs, it simply uses the attributes of the object to which it belongs. And here, um, I'm going to go ahead and comment out this line because once you have a two string method inside any object, this concatenation is going to concatenate the labeled the labeled string. So let's just go ahead and run that. Okay. And you can see that this line here now produces this output because by kind of auto magically when you concatenate a circle object, the logger will try to run that circle object's two string method. Okay, so now we have a nice little circle object which can two string itself. And what we'd like is for that to have a draw method also. So let's do similar thing. We're gonna take the draw circle function that we already have, we're gonna we're going to assign that to the draw property, which makes it a method inside the object. 
And we're going to do a very small amount of change up in this code to make it run inside the context of the object. So we're no longer going to pass a circle to this code. Any place where the word circle appears in here, we simply tell the code, use the attributes of the object to which you belong. And if I found them all, and I can type, okay, we're going to continue to pass a context to the draw circle because, because all of these calls here need to be working with that context object. But now we're saying the arc is going to go from, it has this center point, this Y point, this size. Okay. So then that what that allows us to do is down here in draw a circle. Okay. Rather than have this line, we can simply ask the circle, circle one, which is now a much more capable object to draw itself. We know it needs a context from us, so we hand it that. And just so everybody can know that new code is running, um, including me, I'm going to change the color of the circle to blue. That should be distinguishable. And let's see if that works. Okay. So now we have a nice little circle object. Okay. We have code that can make it to string and we have code that can draw. What we want to do is get that code neatly packaged up over in the circle.js file so that we're not messing up this code with it. This code can look simpler and we can depend on the code in circle.js to always do the same thing for us every time we try to create a circle. Okay, so we have a couple of things to do here. Um, some of it's real simple. We're going to take these two methods, these two functions, which eventually become methods when they're assigned, and we're simply going to take them out of here and put them into here's um, extra curly brackets. That looks like that's okay. We've got a well-behaved, well-formatted draw circle. We've got a well-formatted circle to string. Okay. We need to now grab this code and put it in the context of a make circle function. So for right now, I'm going to grab this code, but not delete it, just copy it. Okay, move it over here. And under the comment for construct a circle object, I'm gonna put that, okay. And then under the comment for return the object, And if I always wanted, so I've got that much code. Let's see if that much code is working. You know me, I like to build a little test a little. Okay. Um, and if I just run right now, I don't think it will work. So let's just grab it. Okay. So, oh, right. Okay. So over here in draw one, we have a few things we need to deal with. We've taken out the two functions that this refers to. So now what we need to do is we need to just call make circle. Okay. And if we run that, uh, make circle is not defined because I never, I have not yet added circle to my index. So I'm going to duplicate this line. And point to circle.js. 
And do read this note. It really does matter what order you put these files in, because any file that uses point code has to come after the point.js. Think about that. Okay, so let's see if now we run. Okay, and point one is not defined. Right, okay. So the reason this isn't working is my make circle here doesn't have the information that it needs. Okay, so what make circle needs is it needs a center. Well, it's called a point. It needs a color, a radius, a size, and a color. Okay, so when we call make circle, we have to give it these three pieces of information. So the point parameter is assigned to the center point. Okay. The size parameter is assigned to the, um, the size property. And JavaScript isn't going to get confused about that, but let's not confuse ourselves which one we mean. Okay, let's call that new size and this one new color. Okay, and so we're assigning the value of new size to the size property and we're assigning the value of new color to the color property. And just to be really clear, let's go ahead and call this center point. Okay, so when we call make circle, we have to hand in a center point, a new size and a new color. So let's go back and do that. And here, we know which point we want, we want point one. Um, let's go ahead and do 100 for the size. And um, let's make this one purple. So try and get that purple circle drawn yet. Okay, in make circle, Okay, circle JS point is not defined. Let's see what's up. Oh, yeah, I changed the name of that argument and didn't change it down here. The parameter. All right, let's see if that runs. Okay, so now we have what I would consider a dependable object. It can log itself or help us log it. Okay. It will always have correctly spelled attributes for three values and two methods. And we can simply ask it to draw itself. And at that point, the code in this file is smaller and simpler. Okay, we can get rid of some of this. We just make the circle, we can log the circle, we can draw the circle. And you're going to do essentially that same exercise with the rectangle code. And then once you have these well behaved objects, you get a fun exercise in drawing flags with those. Hope that helps. Uh, and let me know if you have questions.